Welcome to a lesson on an alternative method for dividing fractions. In this lesson, we'll discuss how we can find the quotient of fractions by determining the quotient of whole numbers. So before we do this, let's review how we find the quotient of whole numbers. Here we have 17 divided by five, meaning we want to determine how many fives there are in 17. So to do this, we'll actually set this up as a long division problem where we have 17 divided by five, and there are three fives in 17. Three times five equals 15, and we subtract, we have a remainder of two, which means our quotient is a mixed number where the whole number is three and the fraction is two-fifths, the remainder over the divisor. So again, this tells us there are three and two-fifths fives in 17. Now let's discuss division involving fractions. Let's first consider seven-eighths divided by one-eighth. Our goal here is to determine how many one-eighths there are in seven-eighths. And because our denominators are the same, we can actually use the model of seven-eighths here to count the number of one-eighths in seven-eighths. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven one-eighths in seven-eighths, and therefore our quotient is equal to seven. So notice how because our denominators are the same, we could actually find this quotient by simply dividing the numerators. Seven divided by one is equal to our quotient of seven. And again, the reason this works is because if our denominators are the same, then our pieces are the same size, and therefore we have seven pieces divided by one piece, which would be equal to seven. Now let's take a look at another example. Here we have seven-eighths divided by one-fourth. Let's start by writing one-fourth with a denominator of eight, so these two fractions have the same denominator. So we'll multiply one-fourth by two over two, which would give us seven-eighths divided by two-eighths. So again, our goal here is to determine how many two-eighths there are in seven-eighths, but again, because our denominators are the same, meaning these pieces are the same size, we have seven pieces divided by two pieces, which means we can find this quotient by dividing the numerators. We would have seven divided by two. Well, seven divided by two, we can write as seven halves. Or if we want this as a mixed number, we could perform long division. Seven divided by two would be three. Three times two is six, with the remainder of one. Therefore, seven halves is equal to three and one half. So we can also write this as three and one half, meaning there are three and one half two eighths in seven eighths. Let's verify this using our model. Again, we're counting the number of two eighths in seven eighths. So here's one two eighth, here's another two eighth, and here's another two eighth. Now remember, we're counting the number of two eighths this would be half of two eighths, giving us our quotient of three and a half or seven halves. Let's try another one. Let's consider two divided by one fourth. So let's write this as two over one divided by one fourth. Let's obtain a common denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply two over one by four over four. So now we have eight-fourths divided by one-fourth. So we want to determine how many one-fourths there are in eight-fourths. But again, because our denominators are the same, we can find this quotient by dividing the numerators. Eight divided by one equals eight. So this tells us there are eight one-fourths in eight-fourths, or if we want, eight one-fourths in two. Let's go ahead and use our model to verify this. Again, we're determining the number of one-fourths in two. So there's one, two, three, four one-fourths so far, but then we have four more over here, so we have five, six, seven, eight one-fourths in two, verifying our quotient. Now let's take a look at one more example where it's gonna be a little more challenging to verify using the model. This model may look a little confusing at first, so let's focus on our quotient here. 
let's first write these two fractions with a common denominator. The least common multiple of three and five would be 15. So let's write this as four fifths, leave some space, divided by two thirds. And now we'll multiply four fifths by three over three to obtain a denominator of 15. We'll multiply two thirds by five over five to obtain a denominator of 15. So now we can write this as 12 fifteenths divided by 10 fifteenths. So we want to determine how many 10 fifteenths there are in 12 fifteenths. We should recognize there's at least one because 10 fifteenths is less than 12 fifteenths. But once again, because our denominators are the same, we can find this quotient by dividing the numerators. Our quotient would be 12 divided by 10, which we can write as 12 tenths. But these do share a common factor of two. This would simplify to six fifths. This is simplified, but it is an improper fraction. Let's also express this as a mixed number. And let's go ahead and use the original quotient here, 12 divided by 10. So 12 divided by 10, there's one 10 in 12. We have a remainder of two, so this would be one and two tenths. And two tenths does simplify to one fifth. And six fifths is equal to one and one fifth. Which means there is one and one fifth, 10 fifteenths and 12 fifteenths. Or looking back at the original problem, there is one and one fifth, two thirds and four fifths. Let's see if we can make sense of this using this model here. First recognize that this green fraction bar represents four fifths. And to determine how many two thirds there are in four fifths, we would divide the green fraction bar into thirds, which we did using these red vertical bars. And now we can count the number of two thirds and four fifths. Notice that this region here would be one two thirds and four fifths. And we're left with this little piece here which is hard to tell, but this piece here would be one-fifth of two-thirds. Now before we go, let's summarize what we've discovered. When dividing fractions, if the denominators are the same, the quotient of the fractions is the quotient of the numerators. So if we have A over B divided by C over B, again the denominators are the same, then this quotient is equal to A divided by C or A over C. So we have the option of writing the fractions with a common denominator and then dividing the numerators. I hope you find this alternative method helpful.